Hey guys, this is Chris from Blind Man's Bluff Gaming, and this is my Doom 2016 campaign review. First to start, my favorite thing about this game is that Doom 2016 is a non-stop, never stop moving, never bother reloading race car shooter. Honestly, I think the Doom Slayer's legs fell off by the end of the game because that dude is always moving. My favorite thing about the game is that this game should really be called Doom 2016 because it did what 343 did with Halo 5. They added gameplay elements that feel like they've always been there. From glory kills for health to chainsaw kills for ammo along with running, double jumping, and mantling, Doom 2016 is Doom. To summarize the plot, in Doom 2016 you play the Doom Slayer, a mysterious figure awakened and chained in a stone sarcophagus in the midst of a demonic outbreak on Mars with the simple instructions, rip and tear until it's done. The mystery of who you are unfolds throughout the game. Excitement level. As I said before, Doom is basically a race car shooter man you are constantly moving constantly switching your gun constantly throwing grenades this is not a uh, camper game squat down and make some s'mores and get some headshots you know dude you're, you're moving controls the controls are tight and smooth I did play with the elite controller which made a noticeable difference I had jump switch switch weapon and chainsaw map to the paddles but overall the controls are butter graphics I played Doom on the Xbox One and it looks really good I did notice a few slowdowns with a a lot of enemies on screen and there was noticeable judder on uh, like a later end boss fight it's a two stage boss fight with the dude has some kind of energy shield or something sound Doom 2016 has an outstanding soundtrack. The metal fits the the game's aggressive rip and tear attitude perfectly, and it's one of my highlights of the game. There were there were certain uh, levels with certain soundtracks that just were awesome. And what's important here: replayability and is it repetitive? The cam the campaign is a beefy 12 to 15 hours with with variety of weapons weapon challenges rune challenges uh, collectibles and I'm missing one there's another ch there's another there's tons of challenges in here so there's tons of stuff to do uh, and there's there's more than enough reason to go back for a second and I'm even on my third playthrough just because I'm, I'm loving it okay my dislikes uh, and these are not major criticism they're just kinda of small quirks that I wish they would have you know did more of first thing is the story I do love the Doom Slayer I just he is he doesn't say anything but you know his just physical actions like just smashing a screen or or uh, just destroying this or you know clenching his clenching his fist and tightening his gloves or his armor or whatever I mean he, he does kind of emote and tell you what what the dudes about and what he what he's about is just awesome uh, but I do wish there was a little more story a little more fleshing out of what's going on here who is this dude but I understand that they designed the game to be more of a mystery, you know, kind of unfolding as you're going along. Another thing, um, I think the rune trials in the game, some of them can be obsessively, you know, hard or you have to be just do everything perfect to beat the trial. And maybe that's what they meant. Uh, I haven't tried it, but I think maybe if you did them on easy or something maybe they would be easier another now this is something I hope they could patch is when you pick something up on the map 
uh, or you pick up a collectible, or armor upgrade, or whatever, it should disappear on your map. Uh, this game is is a lot of map reading. You know, there you're you're backtracking. You're going here, going there. There's like four or five different levels to the level. You know, and and it it can be a little harder than it needs to to, to navigate. Uh, there was one level I didn't like in the game. It's called Titan's Realm. It seemed like they basically took three multiplayer levels and mash them together and you know here you go here <laughs> and then uh i guess my last thing is maybe i would have liked to see a little more variety in the glory kills they have a system where wherever you point on the body it does you know a specific glory kill but what i found is i was moving so fast and i was focused so much on my combat that i didn't have time to stop you know, look down at the dude's right toe and, you know, do a glory kill. So I kept seeing the same glory kill quite a bit. But anyways, overall, I would give this game a 9 out of 10, and I would give it a definite recommendation to buy for, for one, a person who loves campaigns, who loves story, because a story is good, it's not great. But also for someone who skips the score, the story doesn't care about it, you know, couldn't care less about it. Just give me a gun and let me shoot something. You are gonna dig this game, so I would I would recommend it definitely. Now here's some pro tips that can definitely help you improve your gameplay and have more fun in this game. Number one, when you enter an area, look for the power-ups. In later levels. In later levels, or even in, in earlier levels, there'll be rooms that they kind of lock you in, and they they throw wave after wave of enemies at you, and they just keep respawning. But they get progressively harder. So by the end of of the waves, you're going to get like the barons and like you know the other big dudes. So what I did is I would wait until towards the end waves and then I pick up my power up and then I finish those dudes off. Tip number two, use siphon grenades especially in the latter part of the game because your guns are so powerful you basically turn these guys into chum before you even get a chance to you know do a glory kill. Plus there's so many dudes just just climbing on you that uh, it actually is that poster, right? He's standing on top of something and these dudes are climbing on him. It's pretty much that. Tip number three. I found the double barrel and plasma rifle stun work really well. Especially, you know, for crowd control. And kind of a sub tip of that would be make sure you're, you're leveling up the, the guns you're using. Uh, their secondary fire because once you get them all the way up they are pretty powerful tip number four another combo I like towards the end of the game or or really the end of the game was the double barrel plus gauze rifle you know all the way leveled up and what I would do is I would double shoot with the double barrel and then swap to uh, the gauze rifle shoot that and then swap back to the double barrel and it worked really well and that's where the elite controller can actually help quite a bit because it just you know flip of the paddle tip number five learn to check the map regularly as you're moving through through the levels make sure you're getting the argent energies it it can be daunting I'm even on like my third playthrough and there's stuff I'm still finding but if you can learn the symbols and kinda of learn how to you know decipher the map it, it makes a big difference and tip number seven or six that I would give is if you have an elite controller set the paddles set one paddle to jump and another paddle to switch weapon uh, which is really critical in this game and tip number seven I would suggest leveling up your equipment slot on your Praetis armor just because if you are going to throw a lot of grenades and use your grenades are actually really powerful uh, it, it definitely helps towards the end of the game 
Anyways, guys, I hope this review helped you out. I hope it um, these tips will help you out, help you have more fun in this game. And uh, stay awesome.